Hey guys, Rob here. I uh, just got back from Virginia International Raceway with my first event with my new uh, track trailer. Uh, so I'm pulling this with a 2018 Audi RS3 that you can see behind me, still completely decked out for yesterday's event. Uh, and then also in the corner you see everything pretty well still loaded up. So what I'm going to do is uh, take everybody through how it's packed down and then I'll pause the video and come back to opened up where everything is actually stored. So <clears throat> this is actually a 2005 jet ski trailer uh, that we used to put our jet ski in the water. Now that it's on a jet ski lift, uh, we don't really need the trailer. Um, I didn't do anything permanent, but I did remove the winch attachment from the nose. I added a pair of toolboxes to the front these are, one is a Husky, as you can see from the logo on top, from Home Depot. It is a 37-inch box with wheels. Some folks take the wheels off. I decided that I may want to use this in the off-season, so I left the wheels on. The other one is a Contico, and I actually got the idea from the folks at uh, Leroy Engineering who build really, really super nice track trailers. If you want a turnkey solution, that's the place to get it. Uh, <clears throat> So this trailer's weight rating is about 1,500 pounds. Um, I have two sets of wheels and tires for the RS3. So right here what you're looking at is two sets of new speed wheels. One set is 19s, one set is 18s. Uh, wrapped with a Seller Attire 651 Sport in 200 Treadwear. A little further back, you get a set of quick jacks. Uh, the pump is actually in the trunk of the car. Adding the pump to the trailer made the nose a little bit heavy. And then the final toolbox, this is something I'm going to change. This is a toolbox that my friend Ron gave to me. Uh, it has a easy up in it currently, uh, but it pretty much takes up the whole box and Frankly, there's probably not much reason to have the easy up actually in the box when I could strap it to the back or put it somewhere that's a little bit more useful. Uh, what I did was I moved the bunks of the trailer all the way to the inside. You can pretty well see how that works. The uh, rear toolbox only straps to one of the bunks because it also has those two little notches on either side to hang on to it. And then it actually makes a really nice place for the uh, tires to wedge between the beam here and you can kind of see in the middle they rest on the interior so after you set everything up it's just a matter of ratchet stretching strapping everything down uh, you go straight across the other upside here is that this actually allows you to be able to carry an odd number of tires so let's say you pop one uh, to the point that you uh, no longer have the tire um, because of the way this stretches around you don't have to carry both pairs uh, I actually did a road test where I was carrying only five tires uh, with actually uh, three on this side and two on that side just to see how the balance was going to work and as long as you keep it relatively balanced everything seems to work pretty well so back with you in a minute to explain everything opened up all right, back with you. We got the trailer all opened up. Both toolboxes are able to stay open. I just throw a bungee cord on top of them. Uh, they are actually only secured with a couple of squared off U-bolts. And that's really more for stability. I don't really expect them to hold the trailer. That's why I ratchet strap everything down uh, the way that I do. So right hand side I'm basically putting the messy stuff um, this is the cables for the quick jacks that potentially leak a little bit of atf occasionally um, this is where i will be keeping brake fluid transmission fluid anything else you know the the brake bleed power pump will eventually go in here it also has a nice little tray so i've got a first aid kit up here uh, not that this is really going to stop anything but if i bust a knuckle at the track that's really what that's for and then I can also keep all of my ratchet straps in there when the trailer goes into storage. On the other side here, we end up with uh, essentially all of the tools, all the battery powered things, uh, anything that needs to stay clean uh, for the duration of an event. Pretty, pretty straightforward there. Around to the back, we can see, I'll pull a tire out here. 
So you can kind of see how the tires wedge against the bunks of the jet ski trailer. Um, the tires will not be stored outside with the trailer, they will live inside. Around back, the Easy Up fits pretty well in this. I just don't think it's necessary. So we will be removing that. Um, brake pads, things like that can live back here. Anything that's a little heavy. So one of the catches with this trailer, or, or actually more specifically, the RS3 itself, is that the tongue weight becomes an issue. So with a jet ski, a lot of your weight can be centered directly over the axle with the exception of just a little bit for stability. However, when you start loading up all of this, tongue weight gets a little heavy. So the RS3 with the uh, hitch on it is really only designed for about 100 pounds. So right now I am right at the limit. My goal is to actually move the axle another uh, two to three inches forward. I don't wanna to come too far forward and, and uh, hurt the stability of towing, but I really would like to get the quick jack pump in a toolbox, even if that toolbox has to move to the rear. Uh, so I may be doing some reconfiguring. I'll do an update video, uh, depending on how that works. And then the, uh, the pop-up tent, I really honestly believe can either live up here on top or, or just generally somewhere else. Um, only other things I want to add are a spare tire, which I do have. I just tossed it in the trunk of the car for this particular event because I haven't figured out a mounting place just yet. And then finally, anybody who's done ratchet straps over a long uh, stretch knows that if you're not able to have somebody hold it on the other side and you can't strap it down really tight, you end up in a situation where you're kind of running back and forth trying to get straps to, to hold. So what I've done is I've ordered some two inch straps and then I have um, some E-Track. And I'm gonna figure out a way without drilling holes in the C-channel of the trailer to mount the E-Track on the inside, potentially to another, uh, another steel beam and then you bolt it in. And then that way, once I clip those in, they'll simply come up and around and they're rated for, I think, 1500 pounds so I, I really don't see an issue uh, with that and that'll also better enable me to carry single tires so uh, carrying a single on this what I typically do is actually move whatever single I'm carrying to the center of the trailer so if I was going to say a track night in America or something like that where I didn't need a bunch of equipment uh, this was a full day of open track so I wanted two full sets with me I could easily just put a single row of tires straight down the middle, strap everything down, and be good to go for the entire event. Um, I do plan to do some lighting improvements in the state of North Carolina. All I'm actually legally required to have is reflectors. Um, so since it's such a light trailer, I haven't done that just yet. And then obviously you're seeing some uh, decay on the, the back here from the jet ski setup. So this uh, fall when I do pull the the jet ski out of the water, I will go ahead and do a little bit of uh, refurbishment at that point. So I'll put links to everything that I'm using in the description of the video below, uh, including the trailer hitch. And once I get the car up on quick jacks, I'll also go ahead and do a video of uh, how that all came together. But I'll go ahead and post a link to the hitch in the in the description below as well. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.